Janet. Yes, miss. I left some books behind. Well, hurry up. The fog's quite thick and it's getting dark. That's why the head curtailed further lessons for the day, you know. I got to the gate before I realised I'd left my music books behind, miss. I thought as I'd be home early, I might get some extra practice in this evening. You know, Janet, you mustn't neglect your other schoolwork. In the long run, it could be more beneficial to you. Music is a very precarious profession. It's what I want to do, Miss Mitchell. Yes, I know it is, and I don't want to dissuade you. All I'm saying is that you need other skills in case you don't become a cellist. Well, that's all. Now, surely you see the wisdom in that? Yes, miss. I'm sure your mother has said the same thing, hasn't she? Yes, miss. Of course she has. Well, come along then. Off you go. I gather Mrs. Sorrell is hopeful that you'll pass the examinations for the Royal Academy. Yes, miss, I know. Oh, you'll have to work jolly hard. Yes. Now, off you go and get home as quickly as you can, before your parents start worrying. Good night, miss. Good night, Janet. See a thing. Don't know how that bus driver managed. I hate fog. It's so spooky. Like lots of thick cobwebs. Everything becomes so quiet. Oh, here's a turning. Now this should be Chalcot Street. I better check. Yes, thank goodness. <gasps> oh! Sorry, I didn't oh. see you. Oh, oh dear, I frightened you. I'm sorry. Oh. You're only wearing pyjamas. Are you all right? Oh. Look, you shouldn't be walking out in the street dressed like that. You'll catch a terrible cold. Where do you live? Can you understand me? Did you wander out from one of these houses? You're shivering with cold. Look, please, where do you live? Very old, aren't you? Where do you live? I, I do not know. Try and think. Is it in one of these houses? You can't have come far dressed like that. Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Number ninety-three. Is that the number of your house? Is it? Then we'll find it. Come on. Hold on to my arm. Now that's it. Number 93, you said. Let's just take a look at the number on this gate. 77. Well, we're on the right side, aren't we? And we're not far from number 93. I'll walk slowly and we'll soon have you inside in the warm. What's your name? Can't you remember? Well, never mind. Look, I think this must be 93. Let's see. Yes, I'm right. Come along, I'll open the gate. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you want to go in? There's nothing to be afraid of. This is your house. Look, number 93. All right, you stay here by the gate and I'll go and knock on the door. But don't move now. Yes? Excuse me. Yes, dear. What is it? This gentleman. Uh, what gentleman, dear? I, I can't see you, gentleman. He's standing by the gate. Would you come and fetch him, please? I think he lives here. At least he gave me this number. He looks as if he's just got out of bed. But there's no man living in this house, dear. Just me and mother. My father died two years ago, and we're the only ones living here now. Sorry, dear. You've got the wrong address. avoided you. We both had a narrow escape. I'm shaking. I thought... 
Never mind. You don't live at number 93, at least not in this road. It must be one of the side streets. Please try and remember. I am quite lost. I... I have no idea where I am to go. I see. Well, I think the best thing to do in that case is for me to walk you to the main road by the tube. There's a police station a few yards away from there. I'll take you into it. You'll be warm and dry inside while they try and find out where you live. Someone must be making inquiries about you by now. Come along. Take my arm. just noticed. It must be freezing. Why didn't you stay at home where you ought to be? I could not stay. It was home no longer. I do not belong there anymore. What do you mean? It was not home any longer. They didn't want you. They made you feel like a nuisance, is that it? You felt unwanted. Is that it? That's awful. Is that why you walked out? I... I... You can't remember. The cold, the worry, the awfulness of wanting to run away. All you can recall is the number. Ninety-three. Yes, ninety-three. Who do you live with? No one. You're alone? Everyone is alone. No, I, I mean, is your wife some relative, perhaps? I have no one. I have always been alone. Except for my cello. My cello is my only true companion. Cello? Yes. You play the cello? Yes. How lovely. I play the cello, too. Well, I'm learning to play. I love it. I've been learning to play for the last two years. I've got lots of records, too. Casals? The only true master of the instrument. Fournier? Dupre? Taroba? The names are not unknown. Also, Maurice Eisenberg. I've heard of him, but that's all. You know, you may have forgotten where you live, but you seem to remember those things all right. Perhaps music is where I live. I think I know what you mean. Do you? Well, when I'm playing my cello or listening to music, I'm not in my bedroom or my music teacher's room. I'm somewhere else. I can't explain, but I'm almost living in the music. That child is the sign of a true musician. Is that so? Of course. We'll soon be at the police station now. It's just across the main road at the next turning. You are very kind. We were intended to meet. I'd like to think that. You are a guide to my lostness. And I can return your gift with a little advice from an old man, which I hope will guide you through the rest of your life. Whatever happens to you in life, keep playing your cello. Believe in it. Believe in the music in your soul. Believe in the gift that God has given you. And never will you be friendless or lonely. Will you promise me that? Yes. I'll always remember what you said. Always. Then, my child, you will have a full and wonderful life with music for your dearest companion. Here's the main road. The street lighting's stronger here. We'd better try and keep close together. It's rather crowded. Oh, sorry. Why don't you look where you're going? Said I was sorry. Look out. What? You were walking straight into me. Sorry. I was just helping this old man. What old man? Uh, where are you? Where has he gone? Are you all right? 
Yes, I... I thought I was with somebody. He must have gone off. Don't know what your parents must be doing, letting you wander the streets on a night like this. And I was just across the road when a lot of people came out of the underground. And that's when I lost him. Uh, the man in his pyjamas? Yes. Huh. The crowd probably frightened him and he wandered off back down the side road to hide. I think it's likely to be the other way around. Seeing someone walking out in this weather dressed only in pyjamas is likely to frighten the crowd, I should think. What I'm telling you is the truth, officer. Oh, all right, miss. I don't doubt it. I've made a note of all you've told me. I shouldn't worry too much. I expect someone will have found him by now. Probably bring him in here. You did the right thing, though. You tried to help. I couldn't have left him wandering about in the fog like that. Ah, oh, there's some that would. Now, I think you'd better be off home. Your mother must be panicking by now. Will you let me know if you hear anything? Oh, of course. Uh, leave your name and telephone number on this piece of paper. Thank you. Uh, he didn't tell you his name, then? No. Never mentioned it. No. Mm. I'm sorry. I just didn't think to ask. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. There was one thing I noticed. Mm, what was that? His face. It seemed... well, familiar. You'd met him before? Oh, no. If I'd met him before, there was a good chance I'd have known where he lived. Oh, that's true. But, but why did you think the face was familiar? I don't know. I may have seen him before somewhere, I suppose. Not to meet. Just a face in a crowd that stuck. Mm. The street lighting was better, so I just caught sight of his face, and then in that split second, his face seemed familiar. Well, don't lose any sleep over it. You written down your name and address? Yes, there you are. Thank you. Now you get home and have some tea and get in front of the telly. That's where all civilised people should be on a night like this. Well, darling. If it had been anyone else but you, I'd have thought the whole story was a figment of their imagination. I think I still do. Oh, Daddy, you don't! An old man running around in the fog in his pyjamas. You're having us on. <laughs> Go on, tell us you're having us on. It's true, I tell you! Well, I shouldn't worry about him any longer. He's either in bed with pneumonia or dead in the gutter somewhere. I mean, no one should be out in that fog, young or old. I think you're cruel, Daddy. Cruel and heartless. That was an awful thing to say. I hate you. Steady on, Janet. I was only joking. It's not a joke. It's not. He was a lovely old man. He understood. I don't think you should talk to your father like that, Janet. Then he shouldn't make fun of me. I wasn't making fun of you. I was just conjuring up a picture of you leading an old man down Charlcourt Street in into the high street with nothing on but a pair of striped pyjamas. Who said they were striped? I didn't. Striped or plain, it doesn't make any difference, Janet. The picture still remains preposterous. <laughs> now, stop it, you two. <laughs> no sense of humour. Trust you, Geoffrey. So it's my fault. Oh, I didn't say so, but she obviously feels strongly about it. Picking up a vagrant? It wasn't like that. Well, what would you call it, unless the whole thing was pure fantasy? She wouldn't have gone to the police if it was pure fantasy. She may not have a sense of humour, but she's not stupid. She's not given to fantasies. And she is sensitive. You're expecting me to go upstairs and apologise, is that it? No. Yes, you are. I believe it happened as she described it. And I think it was very wrong of you to make fun of her when she's tried to help some poor old man wandering in the streets, probably in a state of amnesia. No. I mean, some of the children nearby just have searched him for valuables and left him lying in the gutter. I think you ought to go upstairs and apologise. Janet! Janet, can I come in? The door's not locked! May I turn this down a bit? If you want to. Can I talk to you for a moment? What about? I wanted to tell you something. What? We've just telephoned the police station. Have you? Yes. What did they say? Don't get excited. What did they say, Daddy? Please tell me. Nothing, I'm afraid. 
No one's brought in an old man and no one's reported him missing. But there must be someone. The officer on duty said he took everything you said seriously and that everyone had been instructed to be on the lookout for him. But they'll never see him in this fog. He's probably gone by now. Gone? Gone to wherever he came from. Oh, oh, I see. Your mother and I came to the conclusion that he'd probably lost his memory and had simply walked out of his home, wandering about, not knowing what to do. It sometimes happens to people, especially if they're old, and you said he was very old. Yes. Then you believe me? Of course. That's the other reason I came up. What's that? Uh, to apologise for being so insensitive. Oh, Daddy, I do love you. <laughs> Why? Because I'm here apologising? Well, that, but mainly that you bothered to phone the police station to find out. Well, I'm sorry the result wasn't more promising. We did all we could, didn't we? You did. You were the one who befriended him, and I'm proud of you for that. It was a very generous thing to do when you could have walked by on the other side. Thank you. <laughs> it's late. Time you were asleep. Will you take the record off for me, please? Put it away. I uh, heard you practising earlier on. I thought I played the Bach ever so well this evening. It sounded fine. Not inspired? <laughs> Darling, you know me in Bach. Just sounds like a lot of scales up and down, up and down. <laughs> I know that's heresy in a house full of musicians, but you'd react exactly the same if someone holed in one. What? Oh, golf! <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, record safely away. Good night, Janet. Good night. Oh, I must say, I don't like the thought of her going to school in weather like this. You'll be all right, Mother. I've got a music lesson today. I can't miss that. She'll be all right. You know she won't miss a music lesson. You're not taking the car to work this morning, are you, Geoffrey? Not on your life. Look, if it'll put your mind at rest, I'll walk Janet as far as the bus stop in Charlcourt Street and see that she gets on safely. Mm -hmm. With luck, the fog will be clear later on and you can use the car to pick her up. How's that? I would be happier. I'll just get my things. Oh, Daddy. Yes? Can we call in at the police station on the way? Look, Janet, I told you last night, no one's reported anyone missing. He's probably got his memory back, gone home and gone to bed. Now, come along. I've got to make a detour before I get to the office. You? Yes. I had to see you again. But how did you know? I only wanted to thank you for your kindness. Goodbye. Don't go. I want to talk to you. I've been worried about you. There is no need. I went to the police. I am perfectly all right. Please, wait. I only came to thank you for all your kindness. And to tell you that I am going home. You've remembered then? What? You've remembered where you live. Oh, yes. Goodbye, my child. Take heed of the advice I gave you. Practice. Practice hard. And remember me. Always. I'll always remember you. Goodbye. Wait! I'd like to come and see you one evening. All right, quieten down, everyone, quieten down. Now, there's a school trip being planned to Spain this summer. I shall be handing around forms, giving all the details about dates, costs, etc. But you'll want you to give your parents... Keep playing your cello. Believe in it. Believe in the music in your soul. Believe in the gift that God has given you. And never will you be friendly and so see, lonely. The tour through Spain will be quite extensive, covering Madrid, Seville. Janet? Janet! Uh, yes, Miss Mitchell? Are you listening? Yes, Miss. Let's hope so. A trip to Spain might be good for your musical education. Who knows? Music love.
lovers will be saddened to hear of the death yesterday of the Spanish Time for bed now, Just Janet. a minute. Toroba. It's late, darling. Toroba look! A widow look! And two sons who were at his bedside. He was aged 93. Here is Roberto Toroba playing the Delius Cello Concerto at a promenade concert ten years ago. It was to prove his last public appearance. Good night. Come on, Janet, bed. Oh! Janet! Quick, Marjorie. What's the matter? Janet. She's fainted. I'll get some water. Janet. Janet, darling. Janet. What happened? Remember me. Janet. Janet. You all right? Yes. Yes. Remember me. Here. Drink this. Oh, turn that off, Jeff. Right. Happened. You fainted. No, 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 don't try to move. I'm all right, really, Daddy. I'm all right now. Can I get up, please? Are you sure? Let her. She'll be better sitting in a chair. There. Up you come. That's it. What about some brandy, Geoffrey? No, I hate that. 93? Did you hear what he said? Who? On the television. You mean... Something on the television made you faint? Roberto Taroba died aged 93. 93? It wasn't the number of the house he was remembering. It was his age. Darling, what are you talking about? Roberto Taroba, he's dead, Mummy. Darling, I know, but... Well, I, I know he was one of your favourite musicians, but uh, at 93, death isn't exactly unexpected. No! don't understand. The old man I met yesterday in the fog was Roberto Taroba. It was. But he's dead. He died yesterday morning. The television just said. No, Mommy. But the picture they showed, it was him. I knew there was something familiar about his face. It was on an old record I've got upstairs. The same concerto, the Delius. You're talking nonsense, Janet. Mother, it was him. It was. Jessie, please, talk to her. Explain. Janet, you couldn't have seen, spoken to, um, what's his name? Roberto Taroba. You just couldn't have. I'm going to call the doctor. Uh, just a minute, Marjorie. But she's ill, Geoffrey. And we phoned the police. We actually phoned the police to see if they could trace a, a, a ghost. I'm sorry, but I'm phoning Dr Sharp. Mother, please, I'm all right. Really. I'm all right now. I'll never mention it again. I'm going upstairs. I still think... Marjorie, please. Oh, how can you stand there taking this so calmly? Your daughter faints, and then says she's been communicating with a, a ghost. And, oh, honestly. And we're supposed to do nothing? Leave it till the morning. She's heading for a nervous breakdown, I'm sure of it. All her schoolwork and this practising... Oh, I wish to God she'd never taken up this damned instrument. Listen. What's the matter? She's playing her records. Oh, she ought to be asleep. It's the same piece of music. Geoffrey, I, I, I'm frightened. Of what? Well, oh, oh God knows. <laughs> I'm getting as bad as Janet. Don't tell me you're beginning to believe in ghosts. No, but, well, possession. Perhaps she's becoming possessed by... Oh, I, I, I don't know. Listen. Hello, my child. You're there. Somewhere. I have no idea where I am to go. I could not stay. It was home no longer. Everyone is alone. Perhaps music is where I live. Whatever happens to you, my child, keep playing your cello. Believe in it. Believe in the music in your soul. Believe in the gift that God has given you. And never will you be friendless or lonely. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Janet? Janet? I'm all right. I'm going to sleep. You sure? Yes. Good night, then. Good night, Janet. Don't forget to turn your record player off. No, I won't. Good night. 
Better try and get some sleep. All the fog's gone. How clear the night is. How bright the moon. Oh, I'm so lucky. So very lucky. <sighs> What's happening? It's not coming from the stereo. I've turned it off. The turntable's not moving. Roberto 